I give you this book and anoint you, my comrade. Here is my gift in lieu of a reunion. I'm Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and this is Where Not to Start with James Elroy, uh, one of my favorite crime writers. This video, of course, is inspired by my good friend Brian from Bookish, who's been doing some of these, and we've been having some dialogue as he gets another one ready. He suggested I might be competent at doing one for Elroy, so let's give it a shot. Uh, James Elroy, is, he, as I mentioned, he writes crime fiction. He's been writing novels for around 40 years now. Uh, he's one of my favorite writers, and he has a whole series of, of books. He has sort of, you know, his early works. He has two major sequences of novels. He's had his more recent work. Uh, he has some nonfiction. He has some short fiction. So where should one start? Well, uh, and where shouldn't one start, just as importantly? And uh, I want to preface by saying I think, I think Elroy has a really unique strength as a crime writer, and that is that he creates a, in his best novels, he creates a deeply, deeply immersive reading experience. Um, you know, the reader can really feel a part of that world in, in a way where it becomes almost like a hallucinatory experience of just really being in a world, in, in the mind of another character, you know, from the past, and, and seeing that character's view of history. Um, El Elroy succeeds in taking what we know from history and, and historical personages as characters in his books interacting with um, fictional characters of his own creation. He uses, you know, history as this tapestry in which to plot out these, these different things and try to reveal maybe it's not the way it really happened, but it feels like the way history should have happened or could have happened. Um, and he, he really succeeds at doing that. So where don't we start <laughs> with James Elroy? Well, I want to start by talking about uh, a book that was, it's one of his greatest books. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's one of his greatest books. And it's a book that I think really showed an advance in his writing. And that would be L.A. Confidential. Uh, this was a very uh, big and popular movie in the, in the 1990s. And this book was, I think, very popular as well. And, and justifiably, it's, it's, it really is a great book. Um, and it accomplishes everything I just mentioned in, um, you know, in, in why Elroy can be a strong writer. The reason I wouldn't recommend starting with this book is that it's the third book of the L.A. Quartet. And the Elroy's two major sequences, they don't necessarily read as separate books, especially with his Underworld USA trilogy. Um, the LA, uh, uh, L.A. Confidential picks up on the, the page, like page one of L.A. Confidential, picks up on the very last page of The Big Nowhere, which is the second book in the L.A. Quartet. And there, there are key characters in L.A. Confidential who are introduced in either The Black Dahlia or in um, The Big Nowhere that carry through the full quartet sequence of four novels. Um, and so if you, to really get the best experience out of L.A. Confidential, I wouldn't start with it, <laughs> despite it being a great book, despite it being very popular. Um, this is not the first Elroy I would read. I also would not read any of his first six books. Uh, sometimes it's like, oh, you know, let's read the, the, let's start at the beginning and just read your way through. I, you know, Brian suggested that with Toni Morrison. I would, could not like stress more, don't read the first six books. They're not good. Um, they're, it's crime fiction. It's derivative crime fiction. Uh, it's, Elroy has not discovered his voice. He hasn't tapped into any of those things that, that make him special as a writer. You know, no one would claim to be a Tolstoy of crime fiction based on those first six books. Um, the Brown's Requiem is, I think, possibly the first. I have read that. It's not good. Uh, he has a Lloyd Hopkins trilogy, Blood on the Moon. Uh, the, those, by the way, uh, the, the Lloyd Hopkins trilogy can be grouped as L.A. Noir sometimes as an omnibus. Please don't don't spend time reading it. I, I have yet to find a reader of Ellery who likes uh, those books. Um, so The Black Dahlia is kind of regarded as his first really good book where he discovers some sense of the voice that he'll have. Uh, another window new readers like to take into a, uh, a, uh, a, an author is their short fiction. And Elroy has short fiction. He has Hollywood Nocturnes, um, Crime Wave, Destination Morgue. The, the other two each have some like nonfiction essays or articles he wrote from like the 1990s and maybe early 2000s as well interspersed in them. Uh, his short fiction is not good. Um, it doesn't give, it, it contains the sordid aspects of his crime books, his novels, uh, without any of that immersive experience. And so it just is sort of, you know, looking down in, into the gutter for 30 pages without any uh, sense of place or context. Um, 
So I'm, I'm not a huge fan of them. Hollywood Nocturnes is probably the strongest, but uh, I wouldn't recommend his crime, uh, his short fiction at all. The uh, last place I'm going to say don't start with Elroy would be Perfidia. Um, this is the first book in the second LA Quartet. It was published seven years ago to kind of start to kick off this sequence that will run through, I believe, the 1940s, roughly World War II. Um, and it's this is actually quite strong. Um, it introduces uh, two critical points of view that I think are, are real advances in Elroy's fiction, uh, but it kind of meanders, it is long. And really to, to have the full experience, this book feels like it's very much written in in the mind and in, in the world of the first LA Quartet. And um, that, that in some ways it's a response to, to ideas and reactions that have existed around the first LA Quartet. In particularly, uh, one of the main point of view characters is a major character throughout the second, third, and fourth books of the LA Quartet. So it that whole perception on that character it, it, we're assumed to have that as readers when we start Perfidia. So I, would, I wouldn't recommend starting with Perfidia. So where should one start? Well, because that's how Brian likes to do the videos. Uh, where should one start? And the, the, it seems to be, I would say, there's two logical places, and then I'll recommend a, a third, I think, strong contender. And that would depend on whether you want the first book of the LA Quartet, which is the Black Dahlia, or the first book of the Underworld USA trilogy, which is American Tabloid. Each of these is very strong. Um, I'll give a quick overview of, of what to expect from each, um, and then I'll talk about that third sort of like alternative surprise. So the Black Dahlia is the beginning of the LA Quartet, which is roughly the 1940, late 1940s and 1950s in Los Angeles, California. Most of the characters are police officers. It reads a little bit closer to Raymond Chandler, those type, that type of detective fiction. Um, although with specifically uh, LA Confidential, Elroy introduces um, like news accounts and he intersperses the chapters with these like news articles and headlines telling us what's going on, um, personnel files, uh, telling us kind of what's going on and, and really building that like even more immersive experience than what we had had in the Black Dahlia and the Big Nowhere. Um, so if, you know, it, it's more of like a, a, a more focused like crime fiction and it's all centered around Los Angeles. Um, and so, and, and there's a, there's sort of some, a couple of unifying like characters that, that run through, but it's, the books aren't, you know, um, the, the narrators of each book are not the narrators of all the other books. That is different with Underworld USA and leading off with American Tabloid running through the Colt 6000 and Bloods of Rover. Um, these books are really three pieces of one, three parts of one long novel running from roughly like the very end of the 1950s through the very beginning of the 1970s. And Elroy's sort of version of what could have happened <laughs> <laughs> or maybe what should have happened across the 1960s in the U.S., but it's a much more sprawling work. Um, Cuba, uh, Vietnam are brought up, and, and there there are scenes that take place. There are scenes in other um, places in the Caribbean, and the characters across the Underworld USA trilogy link together. So, two couple of narrators from point of view characters from one book are then point of view characters in the next and then our point of view characters, you know, in the last. And so there's there's a, a greater level of continuity. It feels like a much more elliptical work. Characters who are introduced in American Tabloid, we get new views of them in Bloods a Rover. Um, and and there's a, a greater sense of like this, these books occurring um, against the backdrop of, you know, the tapestry of history. J. Edgar Hoover's character in here, um, the Kennedys, Martin Luther King, uh, Sonny Liston, they all, they all exist as like personages who interact with our fictional characters in these books. Um, and so I would, I, I personally think that the Underworld USA trilogy is his greatest achievement. And so American Tabloid would be the place to start with that. Um, but Black Dolly is the first book in the LA Quartet. The Big Knower, the second book, gives a much better sense of who Elroy is as a writer in terms of his style, in terms of having multiple points of view across the novel around the same investigation or crime or event and seeing seeing the event from those different points of view and allowing us as readers to build 
not just a sense of irony, but also a sense of tragedy around like, we can see how things are going wrong. We can see as betrayals start to occur before characters do. And we see it rather than just unfold, we see how it's developing and we see sort of the, the dreams these characters have, even as we know that there's a betrayal that's going to occur. And so I think the, um, the Big Nowhere really reveals that in a better way than the Black Dahlia does. Additionally, uh, the, there are characters in the Big Nowhere who, as I mentioned, this, this book and Ellie Country line right up on each other. There are characters in the Big Nowhere that then run through the rest of the LA Quartet. That's not really the case with the Black Dahlia. No major voice from the Black Dahlia runs through the rest of the LA Quartet the way it does in the Big Nowhere. So this might actually be a, a better sense of who Elroy is as an author, and you don't miss really any critical plot for Big Nowhere, LA Confidential, and White Jazz if you skip the Black Dahlia. Um, but I do want to mention, you know, there's also one other place where not to start with James Elroy, and that's not to read any James Elroy at all. Because, I, you know, some people don't like crime fiction, in which case I would say Unworld USA Trilogy is probably your go-to place. Uh, it feels less like crime fiction. But there, I think there are readers who just won't enjoy Elroy's sensibility. Um, and so we're not to start with James Elroy. Any of his books, don't read any of them. Uh, Elroy's characters have a sense of authenticity and what that means is that for many of them and some of them again are like they're fictional personages of historical individuals and we know on record that these people were racist or homophobic or misogynistic or all of those elroy presents those characters in that way their language is that way um, we see the n-word we see the f-word the homophobic one that actually hurts people like we see those words used we see demeaning and dehumanizing language used not in a way that glorifies it. Elroy is very, he, 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 had, he adopts a detached perspective, but then when it counts, often is bringing it home around like, you know, these are very, very, he makes it very clear, like these are evil people who do evil things and they speak in evil ways. Um, and uh, he, he doesn't glamorize it. He does not create books that exist in a, a sort of fantasy world where all of uh, all of that hatred and dehumanization is really cool and like you know the you know there, i think there are books that do that um and and these aren't books that, that that do that elroy is very much showing uh human characters who who are of their time and re using that to reveal just how like screwed up that time is um but with with that and with with that understanding of that is in his books, if that's something you don't want to experience, don't read any of his books. Don't ever start James Elroy. Um, but if you are interested, I would certainly say Black Dahlia or uh, American Tabloid or even The Big Nowhere. So let me know if you've read Elroy at all. Um, I certainly encourage uh, readers who might be interested to give him a try. And thanks everybody.